Yes, and you join me in Aleppo outside the ancient ramparts of the magnificent citadel. It's all lit up tonight and not just lit up with lights. There's also huge banners of a smiling President Bashar al-Assad. Uh, this celebration is not just one to mark independence. Government supporters are gathering here to celebrate what they see as their government's victory in this war now in its eighth year. Thousands of Syrians have been fighting past the Union, the children playing all around me. There's even a rumor that the president himself and the first lady will be attending tonight's event. And there's lots, there's other foreign foreigners who are here as well, most of them who've been invited because they also are staunch supporters of the government. And I met some of them on the journey here to Aleppo. Well, all the buses have pulled up here, We're just stopping for coffee. A whole, whole convoy, I mean, half a dozen gleaming buses, cars, four-wheel drives. Convoy making its way to the northern city of Aleppo for a big concert tonight on Syria's National Day. And this is not just about national celebrations, this is very much a political event to rally around the flag after the US, British and French missile strikes. And in this uh, massive convoy, all these delegations who've been invited to come to Syria. Here's a gentleman rolling a cigarette with his sandals and shorts and a bright white t-shirt on. And what's your name? Uh, my name's Mike Raddy from London. And what are you doing here, Mike? Uh, this is my third trip to Syria, um, and predominantly I'm here to show my support for the Syrian people. Um, but I'm also here to talk to Syrian people, bring their voices back home, the voices that are so often unheard uh, in Western corporate media. And what, uh, are you here on your own, or do you represent a group? Uh, I'm actually here with my co-editor, Alison, from BS News, but we're with... Uh, BS News. BS News, yeah. BS is what we think BS stands for. <laughs> yes, exactly. Does that mean that your news is BS or you're about... No, this was our ironic title that we chose in frustration with uh, mainstream media five, six years ago. And uh, with that, you include uh, me as the BBC and mainstream media. Absolutely, yeah. I, th I mean, one example of that is that you never refer to the Syrian government. So I think it's a coalition government at the moment, but you never refer to it as the government. We do. It's always referred to it as the uh, Syrian regime. No, I think you should. Uh, that's a little bit of BS too. So tell me, what are the voices that uh, that you don't hear? You you believe? Okay, so Syrian people in general uh, support their um, government. Uh, they certainly support the Syrian Arab army. Um, and we have to face facts that the Syrian Arab army is made up of sons and daughters and brothers and sisters, uncles and aunts and cousins from, from all over Syria. Um, so it's obvious that they support them, they love them and they respect them. It's the Syrian Arab army that is keeping the people safe, effectively. That's predominantly what I've heard. The other thing I've heard is... But the thing is that, let me just say, is that uh, most mainstream media will cover the voices from Syria, the kind of voices that you said, who do support uh, the government, support uh, President Assad and, and the army, but they also cover those Syrians who don't support uh, the army and the president. It's a society of, of many voices. Yeah, but I think uh, the majority support the government, and it's the vast majority. It's hard to say. I mean, this is well, a country at war. It's hard to have it, a, a, a very that, scientific yeah, idea. Yeah, that's very true, but there was a presidential election in 2014, and Bashar al-Assad won effectively the twice the size of the mandate that Theresa May is currently running on. And even prior to the 20, 2014 election, NATO did their own internal report and came to the same conclusion that about 70%, it's a little bit higher now, about 70% support the government currently. And what do you think will be the message of uh, this National Day and this uh, celebration in Aleppo? I think it's basically the, the, uh, the West, Mr. Trump and Mrs. May, they can do what they want with their cruise missiles, but the Syrian people will never be divided. It's a, defi it's a really defiant people. And for them, it's Syria or death. That's their identity. Um, that's the way they, they see their lives. And that's uh, Mike Reddy from London, very much emphasizing the political nature of this event in a deeply divided country where, of course, hundreds of thousands were also killed in Syria's destructive war and millions uh, were displaced. And for them, there's little to celebrate today. Our chief international correspondent, Lise Doucette, reporting.